Today we are looking at the Logitech Momo Racing Wheel, the legendary premium force feedback wheel that originally hit the PC gaming market way back at the tail end of 2005. Logitech had come out all guns blazing with this one, partnering with a real world steering wheel designer to create a sportive and elegantly designed peripheral. I picked up one last week for a measly $20 Australian, so stick around to see if it was a worthwhile investment or just good money down the drain on hopelessly out of date tech. Momo Racing developed the Ferrari F1 wheel back in the day and their real world racing pedigree shines through here in this sleek design. When this came out it caused a serious storm. The 10 inch diameter wheel has this leather textured rubber grip which remains supple, ergonomic and fits together to create an overall premium looking package. The Momo has six programmable buttons on the face which are really easy to reach during the heat of the action for looking back, changing camera or honking the horn of your car or whatever else you assign to them. The simple shifter on the right here moves up and down but can be relocated to the left of the wheel if you so wish. I tend to map this to the handbrake as I prefer to use the paddle shifters for the gearing. These will shout out a satisfying click when activated even after 15 years have passed since the original release. It comes with plastic pedals but somehow these are the most comfortable pedals I have used so far on steering wheels of this vintage. The resistance and the angle of the pedals are perfect for me and I feel no fatigue when using these for long stints. There's also a handy carpet spike bar that makes sure the pedals stay planted in place during hectic racing sessions. The three point clamp system is simple but effective and the extra contact points ensure a rock solid connection with your desk so that even when the wheel is thrashing around like a pit bull it won't come loose. Two clamps are tightened from the top and are then hidden underneath a removable cover, an aesthetic design improvement from the earlier Wingman models. Now, the late 90s was a new frontier for force feedback and its implementation in games runs the gamut of rudimentary through to passable when compared to more modern simulations. Rather, the feedback was there more for immersion rather than for information. That being said, I enjoyed its addition in Sports GT, Sega Rally 2 and Power Slide but unfortunately not so much in the original Colin McRae which surprised me. Note that you do need version 4.60 of the Logitech gaming software for Windows 98, drivers which are easily found online. The software remains surprisingly good allowing for custom feedback settings per game if required. I tend to lower the feedback down to around 40% to save my nerdy muscles but I can easily dial it up or down per game and save the parameters. I also like this custom calibration screen, it's a nice touch for Windows 98. Overall, I'd say that it's the best racing wheel that I have for my Windows 98 rig, hands down. But how does it fare on a more modern system? Well, I am happy to note that it's certainly passable for modern racing games if you can accept its 240 degrees of motion, lack of a clutch pedal or proper shifter, and its older style, smaller wheel diameter. Since trying this with Colin McRae's Dirt Rally, I have been truly having a blast. The game has exquisitely implemented force feedback in their physics model that is informative and tells you precisely when you're losing grip or hitting different surfaces. And this info is more than adequately transmitted to me through this wheel. I previously tried this game with my old non-force feedback Sidewinder wheel and found it absolutely impossible to be competitive. Whilst with this wheel, I've started to make improvements. Obviously, a newer Logitech G series wheel would likely have been even better but they are an order of magnitude more expensive. I also play Project Cars 2 and Wreckfest as well with this wheel and have had no complaints so far. Though I do hear that the latest game releases may start dropping support of this wheel, so its days are numbered. Also of note for any people who enjoy arcade emulation is that this wheel is excellent, in particular with the Sega Model 2 and 3 games. A few of them are now emulated with force feedback and are extremely enjoyable with this wheel. The 240 degrees of rotation is a superb fit for these arcade games and brings back all those great nostalgic feelings. One negative to call out for me is that when I move the wheel large degrees, the wind of the motors will ring out. But it's not so bad to break the immersion and in my opinion, it is something to note if you don't like that noise. I installed the software in Windows 10 from the original CD and it seems to work flawless. In fact, it is exactly the same as what was on Windows 98. I guess it's a case of if it's not broke, then don't fix it. 
So the bottom line from me is that if you want a wheel for Windows 98 or XP, then I would absolutely get one of these if it's less than 50 bucks for sure. If you want to use it for modern sim races and are on a budget, then you might want to get the Driving Force GT as it has a wider wheel diameter and 900 degrees of motion. But if you were to find this one at a rock bottom price, or if you've just never had a force feedback wheel and want to see how it changes your experience, then I don't think you'd go far wrong with this model and you would absolutely still have a ton of fun playing with it. As always, I really appreciate you guys watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like, give it a dislike if you didn't. Drop me a comment if you've got this wheel or played with one similar. And if you'd like to see more videos about vintage computers, then feel free to subscribe. Thanks again, have a good one.